everyone, and welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Nerese. Today, I'm sitting down with a real estate mogul and interior designer turned reality superstar, Reza Farahan. He is one of the breakout stars from the hit reality show, Shaz of Sunset, who has captivated his friends and audiences through his humor, wit, charm, and loving personality. This new season is destined to go down in the record books as one of the best seasons yet. And no person other than the one who keeps it real and raw to talk about it all. So please help me in welcoming Reza Farahan. Hello. What's happening? Listen, I do have to say that you are my favorite. You're such a sweetheart. <laughs> Thank you for that beautiful introduction and having me on today. You're welcome. That trailer was intense. So intense. What is going on? Give me so all the scoop. Give me something new that we're going to learn in, in this season. So <clears throat> I am just as much a Bravo celebrity as I am a Bravo holic. <laughs> and I can tell you, because I've seen every season of every show on Bravo, this season of Shaws of Sunset is going to floor people people like yeah. you're not going to be talking about Teresa flipping the table or <laughs> Bethany Frankel and Jill Zarin falling out or Bethany popping off on Scary Island this season of Shaw's is so next level I, I, I can't even like I don't want to give it away but it's insanity it's insanity, insanity. You, and and I feel like you guys are in a different like life right now I feel you guys have grown so much you have grown like how has it been for you to see yourself from season one to now season eight honestly Shots of Sunset has just been one huge therapy session <laughs> for me and I feel like I've grown and evolved obviously I've made lots of mistakes and done things along the way but it's just been a huge therapy session for me and people comment and then you learn things and you grow I feel like I owe the network and the audiences <laughs> so much because it's really helped to make me into the person that I am today. Yeah. So when people comment on the situations that are happening during the seasons, do you take that into consideration? Do you look at it and you're like, well, maybe, yeah, I was being this way. Or maybe that was too much. Yeah. Or do I you mean, care? Do listen, you like, I was telling uh, the exec from Bravo who's been taking me around for the past couple of days, you know, a, a comment popped up and it was the, the F word that rhymes with maggot. And, you know, like back in the day, it would really upset me. And now I'm thinking this is just probably some internet troll in their mother's basement wanting some engagement. And I don't yeah. give them what they want. But other times it'll be like my kid came out of the closet because of you. I love you. Thanks for the support. And that feeds my soul. It changes. I might be down unrelated to Shaws of Sunset. I might be having a bad business day or a bad work day or a bad day because of a flat tire and reading those things is so uplifting and it just it puts those maggot comments in clear perspective that there's something bigger going on when it comes to changing stereotypes about sexuality or just changing stereotypes about the Middle Eastern culture like we've had a really bad rap because of a lot of things that happened in the world which yeah. are understandable but hopefully Shaw's balance is it out a little bit yeah yeah you talked about two things you talked about um being that person being that voice for the Persian community when it comes to um LBG, LGBTQ um I think you've been doing a great job with that I Thank think you your so voice much. matters a lot and I think that the show has helped kind of give you that outlet, right? So people do acknowledge you and come up to you and tell you that you have helped them when Absolutely. coming out, right? Yeah. And um, especially in the Persian community. So I love this show because it's giving me the ability to see the culture, right? And I don't think there's any show like that. Um, as a Latina, I see you guys. And I'm like, you know what? I also do a bunch of the things that you guys do. Are you kidding me? The yeah. most beautiful part about being on television is having other people, other ethnic minorities hit me up and say, I'm Latina, I'm just like you. I'm Greek, we're just like you. We're Italian, our family's just like you. And it gives me strength and it makes me feel like I'm part of a bigger community. Yes, I'm part of the LGBTQ community, but I'm also a part of a minority group and a lot of minority groups can relate to us and that's a really really special thing that's amazing do you think that the show has given um like a good 
idea of what the Persian community is? Has it been helping you guys? Because I think people didn't have an idea of what it was or maybe thought it you know, was giving it a bad rap. And I think the show has actually helped. Thank you so much for that question. Yeah. Actually, there are a lot of people that are Persian or Iranian Americans who have this expectation that Shaws of Sunset is going to be some National Geographic, like, dive into like our history talking <laughs> about Persepolis or yeah. you know Darius the Great and it's not that it's entertainment and it's just a group of friends who happen to be Persian so on the level of showing you know the world that we are not about the violence that you may see on the news or other crazy things that are completely as foreign to us as they are to you yeah. like yeah. you know this, there's been some recent buzz in the news because someone was killed. You know, we attacked a general from the country that I was born in. And people re were reaching out to me thinking that I would feel one way when in all actuality, I may look crazy and very Persian on the <laughs> outside. But on the inside, I am as American as can be. I kiss the ground that I walk on and feel so blessed to live in this beautiful country. And if our military does something, I'm behind them a thousand percent. In those aspects, I'm as American as American gets. Okay. See? All right, everybody? You understand? You're learning something We're new. We're learning something new. Absolutely. And Again, I love the show because not only am I learning about Persians, but, but I'm learning your, your language. I love that you guys get to speak your language and also, like, it's beautiful. I've learned it's some, like, a little couple of words. I don't, he, <laughs> I don't know if saying Spanglish is disrespectful. I don't no, mean no, no, to be disrespectful. But we speak Franglish because it's like Farsi and oh, see, English. Oh, see, you guys have a little thing too. So totally. Yeah, like, yeah. And I, I won't realize I'm speaking with a friend who understands Farsi and I'll be like, blah, 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 Neiman Marcus and that thing that was on sale and blah, blah. <laughs> And friends know what I'm talking about because I will throw in a word accidentally because I'll just go back and forth between the two languages. But I love that. It's it's so beautiful. I think, Thank I you. Think it's great. Thank you. So now talking about entertainment, yes. we have to talk about a relationship that you, a friendship that you've had yeah. throughout the seasons so that, sad. that right now is not doing well. Is it still not doing it's well? So are you guys like not? I'm heartbroken. Talking? MJ and I are not speaking at the moment and I feel really betrayed. I feel really hurt, but I'm not angry about it anymore. I'm enough time has passed where the anger and the betrayal are subsiding and it's more a sense of loss and a sense that this person that I loved so much for such a long time is not a part of my life anymore. And I'm I pray nightly that you know, I don't want to sound too out there, but like I pray nightly that God heals her heart and Tommy's heart further, heals my heart and Adam's heart further, that once all of this airs, because the thing I worry about is the cameras were up in real time while it was happening, which That's is what insane. I was gonna say. So this is like literally real time. You real guys are time. having these fights. It was Did you start? No. Like, like that? We no. started. Everything was perfectly fine. She got yeah. induced, went to the hospital. I'm having my house warming. We're texting. Everything is great. And then some stuff came to light that was really disturbing to me. And the more information I got, the more upset I was. And I started to distance myself. And then explosions happened. And then Tommy came to our house. And it just went very south. And our friendship took a back burner to the legal stuff that was going on. And yeah. the fear that Adam and I felt that potentially he might come back. Right. And do you think that was the last straw? With Tommy? Tommy coming took it to a level where MJ and I couldn't have a conversation one-on-one -on -one about it anymore. It was too big. The police had gotten involved. My, I had hired an attorney. Oh, uh, wow. This, like, really went far. Yeah, it went really, Do really Do we get far. to see that as well in the season? 100% of it. Wow. Unfortunately. And really, sadly, because... I treasured that relationship and we I, treasured that I relationship. feel such yeah. a sense of void. Yeah. Um, but on the flip side, you know, she was my confidant. She was my go to person. She was my first phone call of the day, my first text message of the day. And if there is something positive that I can take away from this tragedy, it forced Adam and I 
to become a lot closer. Oh, okay. MJ and I had 30 years of friendship. She was my confidant. And I wasn't as open with Adam as I was with MJ. And all uh -huh. of a sudden, it forced Adam and I a lot closer. And through a lot of therapy and a yeah. lot of money, I started to open up more to Adam. He's super communicative. He wants to tell me everything he ate in a day, everyone oh, he okay. interacted with in a day. If someone stepped on his foot, if someone <laughs> honked at him, every single detail. And I'm the opposite. I don't. And I was just gonna ask you, are you being communicative? Because we had that problem in season seven. Totally. Where you, and now yeah. I am. It's mm -hmm. like the per my go to is gone. So now I have an outlet for all my stuff. And Adam's like, I love that you're like my best friend now. So if there is a any positivity that came out of it, it's that. That's awesome. Yeah. And do you think, um, you know, relationships in the past and, and drama that's happened before, do you think it has to do because you guys are on camera no. all the time? This is no. like, it doesn't have to do with, with the show at all. You can't blame the show for how you behave. You can't blame the show for your life. You can't blame the show. I, I'm one of those people who firmly believes I am the captain of my ship in life. If my ship goes one way or if my ship sinks, it's because I took actions. So the show is really not going to be the scapegoat for my relationship with MJ. It's her behavior. It's my behavior. It's our behavior. And unfortunately, we went downhill. But also on the flip side, other relationships flourished. Golnessa, Gigi stepped up for me in ways that I could never imagine. She and I That's are awesome. closer than we've ever been. She literally was like, uh, pack your bags. You and Adam are coming to stay with me for a week uh -huh, until funny. the dust settles at the yeah. worst of, you know, what we were going through. So... And we party and we laugh and we take trips. You guys are still partying? We're still doing yes. our thing. So it's not all like <laughs> super heavy and very serious. That's There's awesome. a lot of laughs. There's a lot of shenanigans. Are we going to get some pranking? Oh, 100%. Like I'm... I live for your pranks. <laughs> I'm still the king of pranks, but I don't know if you guys saw in that promo clip, but there's pictures floating around where you see Mike and Nima and Shervin in drag, and it's yes. dreadful. <laughs> they needed a queen to kind of help them yeah. because they look beastly. <laughs> Not that drag queens look no. bad. They just happen to look bad. Yeah, yeah. They needed like one of my drag queen friends to help them out. To help them out. Yeah. Um, so we have the pranking coming and how about some comedy? I miss your comedy. Girl, <laughs> don't miss it too much because I've been working on my stand up. <gasps> Stop. I, totally. Are you kidding me? All this oh my stuff that has transpired, the only way to heal and grow from it for me is to make light of it and laugh about it. Yes. I, I was being interviewed by Darren Carp and she was asking me what my favorite like line that I had recently heard. And I told her I was watching Real Housewives of New York and Dorinda said slob kebab. And I about <laughs> fell out of my chair. I was drinking something. It came out of my mouth. And I started texting all my friends and family saying, we're Middle Eastern. Kebabs are part of our everyday life. How have I never heard this? So then she immediately asked me, who is the biggest slob kebab on the cast? And in the sweetest, most loving way. I was like, I don't want to talk smack because we're beefing right now, but MJ will have literally a half-eaten breakfast burrito in her purse on no. the way to, like, <laughs> Turkey. She'll whip her purse out and be like, oh, I, I needed a snack. And in a loving way, yeah. she's a slob kebab in the best way possible. That is so funny. Yeah. Who's the party animal still at this moment? Because you guys are older now. I we're, know you guys party, but... We're totally older. <laughs> MJ... Which is great. MJ can drink more and is down. You know that one friend who's always down for yes, one more yes. drink before you leave the party or the club? Yes. That's MJ. She is a walking, talking, good time. Oh, when things God. are good, she's the best person to party with. Uh, she's always down for one more. I really hope you guys get, get together again because Thank that you relationship... So much. That is a... That friendship from the beginning, I thought it was so beautiful. So when I heard about this, I was like, no. Like, that was the friendship that I love to see. That's in, my hope through, and my through prayer. These seasons. Yeah. So we, we're going to get there. Yes. Right? Yeah. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. <laughs> we're going to do it. So another thing that I love about you, and throughout these seasons, you've always done this, is that you um, are not afraid to express your emotions. 
And I think nowadays we have an issue where to- toxic masculinity is a big thing. And people see it as like men cannot be vulnerable. How do you deal with that? Because I think you've done such a good job and I think you've portrayed that very well. I think people need to be more like this. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and take away that stigma. You know? Yeah, I go to therapy a lot and I've realized that for me, when I hold my emotions in, when I don't discuss, A, I get sick, physically sick, or B, I will act in a manner subconsciously, unconsciously, that is detrimental to what I want in life. Previously, in my last relationship, it wasn't a healthy relationship. I wanted out. I wasn't talking. I was keeping everything in, and I ended up having an affair. And the relationship crumbled. I suffered. My ex-partner suffered. And I realized when you keep what you are feeling in, whether it's pain, tears, laughter, whatever it is, there's a side effect. And that side effect can be traumatic. So for me, it's like, I don't care what anyone, I'm gay, Middle Eastern, half Muslim, half Jewish in America. They're going to be talking about me and saying negative things anyway. The toxic (laughs) masculinity thing is the last of my worries. Like, I got to get my stuff out. I just got to keep it 100. I agree. And I know that you and Adam go to therapy all the time, and I'm sure that's helped in the marriage very much, right? And we've seen a little bit of that in the previous season. Very much so. It's a big, we are a, my family is a very pro-therapy family. My sister is a psychotherapist, and... (laughs) We're all about it. Talk, 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 and get it out. Awesome. How's Adam, though? Valentine's Day is coming up. What is he going to get you? More gold? Adam is great. (laughs) You know, you would think Adam would buy me gold, but Adam is more like thoughtful gifts, not the obvious gifts. So Adam will buy me, like, he knows I love spicy food. Like, he bought me a hot sauce making kit where it comes with bottles and ingredients and recipe books. He's so thoughtful and so down to earth that's my thing like oh go to cartier and buy like a piece of jewelry his is you're blinged out right now. (laughs) yes like god you know help me by the time i'm like 50 it's gonna be like (laughs) up to here on both sides yeah yeah so this is something that i'm so happy to talk about and it's your hairline yeah because we saw it in season seven it was like literally in the beginning of it and now it's out can you please tell us a little bit about it because listen what's in this hairline is amazing. Absolutely. And that diamond oil. Crushed situation? diamonds. Oh, my God. We have. So I literally bumped into this lady at the dog park because my dog attacked her dog. I had to <laughs> apologize to her. We got to talking. And we decided we were going to develop a hair care line. And she said, if you're willing to put your money where your mouth is, we can do something really great. And we came up because she's a chemist and she's taught me a little bit. I've learned that champagne has the same pH balance as apple cider vinegar, which is great for shine and great for your hair, but it smells like feet. And it's not good (laughs) to put in in a bottle. But champagne, which is much more expensive, has the same pH balance and gives you the same effect. And it's more you. Way more. (laughs) Crushed diamonds give great shine. Strawberry seed extracts are great antioxidants. My hair is very kinky, angry, doesn't like to be told what to do, unmanageable, kind of like its owner. Um, And Residue Obsessed has truly changed the texture of my hair. It's multicultural. It's unisex. It works on super fine hair. Absolutely. Like, I want it to be in a shower, whether, you know, the husband is using it, the wife, the two husbands, the two wives, or however... Just you letting know, you guys whatever know. Whatever pronoun you're Valentine's using Day for is yourself, coming up, so. Resibeobsessed.com yep. yeah. or nationwide at Sally Beauty. It's one of the things I'm most proud of. And I love it because you guys um, donate Absolutely. to St. Jude's, right? Absolutely. Like some do. of the proceeds go. Absolutely, they go. Amazing. 100%. I'm fortunate and I'm blessed financially. So giving back is a big part of how I was raised. And if you are being blessed by a community, you have to support and embrace and give back to that yeah, community. I love that. Okay, so now this is the biggest question of yes. all time. Are you ready? Let's do it. When is the stash coming back? So, <laughs> thank you for that. I really want the stash. You may see the stash at the reunion. <gasps> I just, that is some tea that no one else has got. We got some tea! Got some tea. Yes! 
<laughs> you may see the stash back at the reunion. I was like, oh, it, it's it's like your thing. It's my thing, and it might need to make an appearance again. Yes, I love it. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> okay, guys, now we have some questions from the audience. Ooh, hi. Hi, my name is Francine Jackie, and my question is, what is the biggest transition from season one to season eight? I think the biggest transition from season one to season eight for me has been really learning how to be in a healthy relationship and committing wholeheartedly, getting married, and really picturing myself as a monogamous person who can dedicate his life to one person, unlike my father um, and my grandmother before him, and I kind of wanted to break the cycle of having parents and grandparents that weren't able to stay together and build a life with one another. That's awesome. I think Thank that you. I know. I know you um, have always talked about that. It's in the a struggle two. for it's me. Been a struggle it's been for a struggle for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hi, I was wondering, as you become more and more popular, do you find it gets easier to handle uh, and deal with the press? Um, you know, honestly, I look at the press as a blessing. I'm fortunate enough to be on a television show, and the press helps to promote the show. And at times, there are things that I'm tremendously embarrassed about. You know, there's things that are out there that the press has, you know, talked about or shown. But you take the good with the bad, and I embrace it. It's part of being on television. You can't have one without the other. We come together. They come as a buy one, get one free package. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Shots of Sunset premieres on Sunday, February 9th at 9 p.m. Eastern Pacific time on Bravo. Thank you so much, Raza. Thank you so much for this having me. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank all.